They are all good? Yeah. All right, this is race ending if they're not. Yeah, I'm taking that. I'll be out of here by December. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think what we've done up until now is redneck, this is gonna take the cake. We got our master engine builder out here. <laughs> I'm gonna walk him through how to build this thing. And we have all of these parts laid out here. What we're gonna do, let's go ahead and put the main bearings in real quick. And these are King Racing bearings. Um, these are actually like a quarter of the cost of Honda bearings. And they are meant for racing. And these are the extra clearance for the heavier oil we use, which is 2050. So what we're gonna do, so we're going to wipe these clean and we're going to put a little film of oil in here and then seat the bearings on it. So these guys, obviously that tab goes right in there. Push tab in, get it squared up and just push it in just like that. Just make sure the tab's down first and then push the other side in. Put another bit of film on the front side. The cut on my finger isn't feeling the oil too well. Oh yeah? A little bit of blood makes engines run better. This seat right here is where the uh, thrust bearings go. Mm -hmm. So once the crank is in, then we put those in. The tooth side goes towards the crank. Yep, just like that. This? Yep, I just walk it down into that hole. Did it fall through? Yeah, it fell through. There we yeah, go. There you go. I'll just push it in until it's flush. Okay. Nice, just like that. And then you'll have just enough clearance for the other one on the other side. The deal. Oil hole lines up and everything. Oil hole aligns up and everything. All right, good deal. Nailed it. Perfect. Same pattern, Same 38. Pattern. Brilliant. So we got to move on to the pistons. So first thing we're going to do is get those rod bearings into those pistons, into those connecting rods. And then we'll flip the block over and make sure all of these uh, piston rings are the right gap. And considering we're turbocharging this engine, we're gonna go a little bit bigger on the compression ring gaps. We'll just make sure that those are gapped a little bit on the higher end of the spec, because we've proven that factory spec is fine, but we'll go a little bit wider on these and then just get those bearings in there. We'll just start with number one and just kind of push it in there. And you take a piston, doesn't have to be any specific one. Push it about halfway down, pistons travel. Spec is 0.15 to 0.3 millimeter. <laughs> that fits nicely. So that's top end of the spec. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna mark this ring as okay. So that's piston number one, compression ring. Number two, there's a groove on this. You can see my thumb gets caught on it. That groove goes down. Hmm? Ring two for piston one. Ring two, piston one. So this one is up to 0.45 millimeters. 0.457. Bam, she's good. Okay, so that's that one. Now the oil rings, there's two oil rings per piston. We'll cover this in a minute, but you need to take two of these and one of these. This one should just fall right through, which it does. So that's good. That one can go there. These two guys, we'll do one at a time. 0.711 as close as we can get. And it fits. Sounds good. And 
that one fit nicely. So these are all good. Let's do that three more times. All right, so this is putting the rings on. These are non-directional. So what we're gonna do is just put green on the left. Then there's little tabs in there that need to butt up together. They can't be overlapped. So I don't know if you can see them right there, right above yeah. the phone. Okay, these guys are non-directional as well. So they go on one on top and one on the bottom. However, they need to be clocked properly, just like that. So that one's ready to go. Top ring, second ring, top oil, spacer oil, bottom oil, just like that. And so what we're gonna do is we'll take our super crappy parts store piston ring compressor here. We'll lace the inside of it with oil real good. piston skirt sticking out a little bit. And these arrows point towards the timing side of the engine. So what we'll do is we'll get this journal aimed straight down. Put some oil in here as well. Tweet. Then you hold this down. Oh, sorry. You want to? No, you can. Okay. So you just hold this down, nice and flush, just like that. And then you can the cap won't have a number here, but it will have a number here that matches up with the cap on the other side. Then we can get these nuts started. Now we'll just give these a little bit of a snugging until we go to final torque. So we'll just give it enough to seat. That's it. Put this one over here. Here? Yep, that's it. I probably have a couple of them. Here's your wapping tool. Like butter. Ooh, money. Too oily, dude. Really money. Yeah, that's good. Bam. All right, so these nuts get torqued to 23 foot pounds straight there. So I would just go little by little. There's no first step. So maybe just torque this down until it feels like it's a little snug and then do the next one. Then do number four. Maybe you got the brace of your foot, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna torque them down and then do these guys and then we'll spin the crank and do two and three. There you go. They are all good? Yeah. All right, this is race ending if they're not. Yeah, I'm taking that. I'll be out of here by December. <laughs> Our table's been kind of overtaken by the tools, but as far as the outside of, or the inside of the engine goes, that's pretty much it. What we need to do now is put on the oil pump. All right, so the D-series oil pumps are pretty small units. They are actually really small. So what we did, I did. This hole right here is actually much smaller. So I ported it and made it a little bit bigger and then I kind of shaped it so it kind of like, it's like rounded on this edge here. And then also the oil comes out of the pump, even though the pump spins this way, the oil actually turns and has to go this way. So it's ported and polished right here as well. So the oil doesn't get sheared as it goes around this hard corner where they drilled this hole in. There is some stuff I can put in here called DevCon where I could actually smooth this into like a really nice 90, but I haven't done that yet. We're just taking little steps here. 
So anyway, ported, polished, ported, polished, and then this guy here is the pressure relief. There's a long spring in here, and I put a 30,000 shim in there, and that 30,000 uh, will help kind of put a little bit more pressure on the relief, and the uh, relief won't open quite as early, so we should get another 5 to 10 pounds of oil pressure out of it, which will be nice, and we're not going to talk about what happened to that screw. Get away from it. Move along. We're going to put a nice thin layer of RTV on it, and then we're gonna slap it on there and I will look up the torque spec to torque these bolts properly. It's beautiful work. Oh, whoa, it's just... Spray the bead on, dude, don't stop. We're on the clock. Yes, look at that. Whew. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go spread this in and make a nice little film out of it. Go ahead and spread this in nicely and then we'll slap it on the motor and torque these bolts down to eight foot pounds, which is insanely low. That is gay. Money. There's like some rule with RTV where you are supposed to put it on and then like kind of clamp it to the engine, not like necessarily tighten it, wait an hour and then tighten it down. And we're not going to do any of that. It's all suggestion. It's all smoke and mirrors, voodoo, dark magic. So you just want to make sure that that O-ring is nicely seated in there, which it is. Looks good. And then you need to clock your oil pump so that it sits on the crank properly. That's pretty close. Lined up, then we line up the dowels. Just kind of give her a couple love taps with the button of the moment. She's just a little deformed from the last 20 times we overheated her, no problem. Right, and these guys get put into eight foot pounds. Nice work, good choice. Oops, good sorry, choice. too much, too much. All right, so you're not technically supposed to do this, but I put an extremely thin layer of RTV on these gaskets, enough that it doesn't squeeze out into that hole. Um, you're not really supposed to do that, but with this racing engine, it's uh, an air leak right there. It's not a risk I'm willing to take. So we'll go ahead and put these on. Um, we're just gonna torque them down to the same torque setting as the oil pump. I'm not too terribly worried about the torque here. So we'll just go ahead and zip these on. We're good to go. We got our professional dime stacker here, so he's gonna roll some more dimes on this machine surface here on our main seal. Ooh, I might wanna clean that one up a little bit here. Oh yeah, you gotta clean the tip, always. Just, around, just like, around the hole just again? Like you want, you want all that? I'll smear it, just run a line. Just right, stack your right, dimes right, from right, A to B. Right. Don't get fancy, oh my God. Yeah, you got, you got a lot to, to bring over with that big glob in the beginning. Just wanna witness this perfection. I almost hate to put it on the engine. Look at this, look at this. All right. Money. Beautiful. Beautiful. Money. So we got the rear main seal on. We got the oil pump on and the oil pump pickup on. One thing I did notice, I had it sitting in that pan, sitting right there to be put on, but that was from a different block. This block, we never took this off. Um, it's just an oil return guide, kind of, I think it's there to kind of help keep oil from being flung up um, and resisting what's coming back to the pan right here. So it's important that you put that back. Um, so what we're gonna do now is uh, put the oil pump or oil pan seal in the pan um, put a little dab of rtv in these areas right here so it doesn't leak and then go ahead and slap the pan on because we are done in there so and when you put your pan on one of these engines just take out your uh, windage tray down there and make sure everything's clean underneath it um, i've already done that this one's good um, so and i do actually really like these o-ring style gaskets all right so just to prevent any leaks we got a little dab of rtv in these areas here um, where these surfaces meet the oil pump and the rear main seal and then when we put the pan on we've got some hardware to lock it down and then we're done in the bottom of the engine and we'll work on just bolting stuff to the short block like these things here look good over here Now, we get to remember everything we forgot to do in there and then do that all over again. So we'll start with this. On this factory D-series is a breather box right here. 
and it's your PCV. Well, on this D-Series over here, you can see we have these 10 ANs on the cover of which we use one. Um, that goes to a breather can that eliminates the need for that breather box. So what we'll do is cap this off. You can get this for like 12 bucks on Amazon. It's just a uh, D-Series block plug or breather plug. A little bit of a greasing. And these go in super tight. So once you get it started, And then one of the 10 mils that holds your breather plug will now hold this. Just get it on there, you just gotta index it. And this will eventually be a return from the catch can, but for now it is just capped off. So we'll just throw this cap on it, snug it down. Good to go. So <clears throat> we'll put on the thermostat housing and the water pipe here. So the thermostat housing, this guy's special. This was our heater send and I actually cut it off, drilled it out to 19 millimeters and then tapped it with a 20 by one millimeter, which is what this plug is. This plug is out of a B series and it plugs the rocker bars in the head when you install them. And if you come over to this head, if you have a D-Series, you'll notice that right here, there is a um, an outlet for your breather or your uh, heater, your heater core. If you, there's a, there's a hex on that thing where you can actually spin it out. It's threaded with 20 by one and you can use this same plug from the B-Series to plug this and this and delete your heater all together. Nice thing about this is it's not rubber. There's no clamp, it will not leak. I like a glove. All right, so this next bit is a little bit off the wall. So if you look down here, this spot right here is where your oil pressure sending unit would go. That thing turns the light on at four and a half pounds. A lot of people think it's 11 or 15, it's not. It's like 15 kPa, that's four pounds, that's not enough and that's not good for a race car. If that light comes on, this engine's already toast. So what we did is we added an oil pressure sensor on our sandwich plate right here, which we'll show that later. But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna plug this and block it off so that uh, we can put our uh, sandwich plate here because it has oil cooler lines on it as well and they have to sit right here and the, the sensor won't fit or the sending unit won't fit. So I'm going to put a little bit of RTV on this, jam it down in there, and uh, then we'll go get the um, sandwich plate and the lines. This is probably not the proper way to do this, but that's how we're doing it. Go just a little on the tight side. Good to go. The excess off of there. And that is an oil pressure sensor delete. Don't need that. Um, you know what, first we'll go ahead and put the water pump and the mount and the pulleys on real fast. We'll go ahead and build the front of the engine. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on this water pump. Um, it is a used water pump. We only used it for one race and it still feels really good. Uh, if you spin and you feel the um, seal resist the rotation of this thing, it's still in good shape. And as long as there wasn't any water coming out of the weep hole, you're good to go. So this pump, we're gonna go ahead and reuse. So go ahead and toss it on. Timing tension pulley looks awful, but it spins all right. So this guy goes on this pin right here. Go ahead and zip your bolt in. And then we won't tighten this down yet because you gotta be able to move this to get your timing belt tensioned. Small hook goes in the tensioner. Big hook goes around the bolts. 
We'll throw the engine mount on. Next up, timing pulley. When you put this on, this needs to go with the curved side facing the engine. It's kind of like a belt funnel. So it goes like that. Then this pulley goes on, just like that. And then from there, the crank pulley goes on with this keyway, but we can't put that on until we get the engine covers behind the laptop on first. So these will go on later. So now we can go ahead and put on our oil cooler lines and then that will wrap up the block for now. Oh, Why you bitch? <laughs> that was happening again. All right, so this is our oil cooler set up here, remote oil cooler. Um, so if you look, it's just a Mishimoto non-thermostatic plate. So the oil comes in through here, goes past the temperature sensor, leaves, goes to the oil uh, cooler. Then it comes back via this hose on the back side here where it goes into the engine. It also goes past our pressure sensor and it goes out to our turbo. So our turbo gets fresh, cool oil. We measure pressure after the um, oil cooler as close to the engine as possible. And we measure temperature right out of the oil pan. So we know worst case temperature and worst case pressure. So. That's how this works. And then if you look very closely, when we put this on, if I take the spacer here, this guy is what secures it. We'll just run this down. We're actually gonna take this back off while I assemble it, but I wanted to cover it while everything's kind of off. So these kind of wrap up this direction, but we'll just let them hang there for now. So if you look right here, or on the back side, you'll see why that pressure sensor can't be in there or that pressure switch that's completely useless. So if you guys are gonna put this on your car, consider something like that. And um, actually, let's uh, put the head studs in just to cap it off, and then we'll call it good. Talk fast. All right, so my phone's at 1%. D-series studs are all the same length, so they go in every hole. Um, when you put these in, you can go ahead and put them in with an Allen wrench and just kind of spin them down until they're snug. You don't want to tighten them, just snug them. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. And that's gonna be it for the short block. Thanks for tuning in guys. Next video, we're gonna put the head and the intake manifold on, finish up the long block. And then from there, we'll work on getting the transmission, wiring harness and all that stuff on it. And then we're gonna talk about that guy right there. So thanks for tuning in, appreciate it. We'll see you next time.